than a century, our education model, for the most part, has remained unchanged. In fact, it could be argued that we have been forcing our learners through a factory farming model of education. We have been force-feeding them siloed, single subjects, often delivered by a single teacher, existing within the confines of a single-cell, cage-like classroom. We have been forcing our learners to feed on a one-size-fits-all curriculum, irregardless of their needs, their background, often their culture, their past, their present, and most importantly, their future. If there is one thing of which we can be certain, the world is changing at a rapid pace. In fact, it could be argued that the only constant is change. Our young people are going out into a very different world than we even went into five, ten years ago. They are not likely to go into a single career that calls for a single set of skills. They may not even go into a career. They are going to need to learn, unlearn, relearn, adapt and change. We have an issue. The world is changing at a far greater pace than our schools are. We have young people learning the skills they need in spite of us, instead of because of us. And if we are not careful, the end will be nigh. It's actually really lucky that we provide an incredibly convenient babysitting service. Because if we didn't, I think they would be walking and voting with their feet. But we're lucky because we can make the change. The future is not something that is done to us. It is something in which we can intervene, and intervene we must. There are things that you can start doing tomorrow. You can start doing next week, irregardless of the demands of your school, your curriculum, your assessment, models. They are challenges. They are problems to overcome. They are not actually preventing you from leading change. We need to be looking at how we can support our learners to engage in genuine independent inquiry. We need to stop kidding ourselves that delivering up a recipe with a foregone conclusion is inquiry learning. Our students need to decide what they need to be curious about. They need to learn the skills and strategies to frame their own questions, be given the tools to find their own information and synthesise that information to gain new understanding, possibly share new knowledge. We need to be providing our learners with authentic projects, dealing with authentic problems. They need to learn that we live in a we, not me world. They need to see that they can be part of their society's solutions. They need to have authentic partners and they need to have authentic actions and outcomes that are making a change for their peers, their school, their community and the world that we live in. They also need digital freedom. You are not saving them from themselves by blocking parts of the internet. <laughs> we 
we actually need to give them the time and the space to manage distractions. We need to teach them the skills they need to avoid the dangers online. If they are going to become digital citizens, they are going to need the opportunity to be real citizens in the first place. Give them the skills, give them the guidance, but whatever you do, take off those training wheels and trust them. We need to give these young people choice and the skills they need to make the right choices. We need to give them time. Time to think. Time and space to fail. Time to learn for themselves. We want young people who have a sense of ownership of their learning journey. We want young people that are agents of their own learning and agents of change. Remember, if you think you can or think you can't, you're probably right. But you are here, so I believe every single person in this room can be responsible for leading the change we need and start leading that change next week, today, now. I want to lay down a challenge. I want to know how each and every one of you are going to set your students free. Thank you. Thank you, Claire.